Good evening, YouTubers, and welcome back in to another edition of Astro's Recap. Your man here, David Artis, here to break things down for you. A lot to sort of dive into or talk about. This is sort of an off-season report. It's January 20th, 2020, 5.17 p.m. Astros have been the topic of conversation this entire off-season, basically. Um, I mean, I'm sure most of you guys are aware of the whole cheating scandal. I did not mention this briefly on my last podcast, which was a week or two after they lost Game 7 of the World Series. Talked about this, and I mean, not much had been talked about, just you know, my fire's coming out publicly, I guess. This might have been even before that. And there was a lot of talk about, you know, sign stealing and all of this. Major League Baseball did their investigation. And yes, it was not ideal, I guess. I sort of expected a penalty. So what they did is basically what I expected, but it was tough to see Jim Crane let both A.J. Hinch and Jeff Luno go, dismiss them. They were both going to be suspended for this 2020 year, but I didn't expect the firing, so that was kind of tough. I think yeah, Jeff Luno's the tough, tougher one to lose of the two. Um, anybody can manage, really. And I've been critical of A.J. Hinch. I do think he is a good manager, even though I question his you know, bullpen decision-making. I think at the end of the day, he is a very good manager. Even keel, never gets too high, never gets too low. Does a very good job of controlling the team, team chemistry, clubhouse chemistry. He's very good at all of that. So that's definitely be tested, challenged with whoever else they bring in. But the players at the end of the day are the ones who basically got both of them fired. They they deserve full responsibility, 100% of the responsibility. Uh, the nine-page report came out, which I did read. I'm not going to go over all of it, but bottom line, so the Astros will lose, well, first of all, find $5 million, which is the max they could go to, I guess. So maximum maximum. Maximum penalty in terms of the fining. They took away draft picks for both the 2020 and 2020 years, or 2020 and 2021 years, both their first and second round picks. So we won't be picking in the first or second round until 2022. And then, of course, Jeff Luno and A.J. Hinch both got suspended for this coming year. So... Those were the penalties sent down. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts, opinions I could get into. Again, I expected the penalty, so that, that didn't really... What had happened and what they got dealt with was to be expected. Just, I wasn't happy with the firing of both AJ and Jeff Luna. So, that's where I'm at in terms of that. So now they've been searching for managers. And, I mean, this close to spring training, it's going to be hard for – I thought Joe Espada would uh, get the shot since he's been our bench coach the last two years, knows the team pretty well, could just step in and basically pick up where Jeff Luna – or A.J. Hinch left off. But they've interviewed, you know, Buck Showalter and Dusty Baker and – John Gibbons and Will Venable, I think, are the four that are... I think Dusty gets interviewed today or tomorrow. And then the other three have already had their interviews. So, it looks like, you know, Jim Crane, who's like... Got to make all the big decisions here, is going to bring in a new manager. So, we'll see. I mean, even if you brought in a Spada, that made more sense if you expected Hinch back next year. But since you released him, dismissed him. I guess you have to find somebody that you expect to be here for the long haul. I just, especially the people they've interviewed. Will Venable was the third base coach, I think, for Chicago. But it's going to be hard to bring in a guy, especially with the ones they've interviewed, 
to just step in and basically do what A.J. Hinch did and how he does things and the way he acts and the way he controls, yeah, the team. Because Buck Showalter, John Gibbons, and Dusty Baker, you know, older, more fatherly type. They're not, you know, A.J. was a big team. Like, he was part of the team. I like to hang out with the players and stuff like that. So, sort of a younger guy. Doesn't look like they're heading in that direction as far of as far as you know, the candidates they've interviewed. So, we'll see. But, yeah, I think the bigger is definitely Jeff Leno. Losing him, I mean, the guy who built the team, the brains of this entire operation, all the good drafting, finding value, and – later round picks in the draft, pulling off the trades he did. I just that's irreplaceable to me. So this team, I mean, I think they'll compete. Obviously, I think they'll compete this year. Maybe one or two years after, but I mean, you take into the fact they don't have picks in the next two years and then whoever they bring in. I just don't think anybody has that track record that Jeff Luno does. And if history has taught us anything, if you just go back to <clears throat> what he did with the Cardinals, I mean, he was there and they were competitive for a decade plus. And then he leaves and they're competitive for the next few years, but they just went through like a three, four year stretch where they didn't even make the playoffs. So uh, that kind of scares me. Um, so tough times for us. So, you know, I wanted to explain the sign stealing, but also talk about just the moves because there have been quite a few, uh, you know, free agents haven't really made noise. They've picked up a few people. So Dustin Garneau, catcher, he played for, I don't know the exact team, but I know he was in our division last year. He'll fill sort of a backup role. <clears throat> but also, so... The first move, which was, you know, less than a month after the season ended, was they let go of Jake Marisnik. They didn't let him go. They traded him to the Mets to get a few prospects. The outfield was just too crowded. I think I think Josh Reddick's probably the first one they're, they're at least try to get rid of. But nobody wants the contract, and it's just one more year. So, so I, yeah, the, the contract was the big issue there. But we have too many outfielders. It's kind of unfortunate. You know, Jake Marisnik, he has four of the five tools. I mean, we know his fielding ability. Uh, of course, he can throw. So, yeah, he can field his position. He can throw. He's got speed, and he hits for power. He just doesn't hit, period. I mean, when he connects, he can definitely launch some long home runs, but he just – Probably your most important tool, hitting for an average. He can't do it. So move on from him, which means Miles Straw will get major. Um, he'll make the 25-man roster and get, you know, I think he's more valuable at least in just in terms of speed. He's like one of the fastest guys in the league. But uh, the defensive ability, I don't think uh, – Anybody can duplicate basically what Marisnik was able to do playing center field. So we'll see. That was the first one. Robinson Chirinos signed back with the Rangers. So they did re-sign Martin Maldonado, a two-year deal, I believe. So you'll have Maldonado and Garneau as your two catchers. Maldonado will get most of the starts, I believe. And, of course, Garrett Cole goes to the Yankees. That was a foregone conclusion that he was not going to be with us. So you got that. I'm trying to think here. They did sign Austin Pruitt, who's a pitcher I knew very little about. Played for the Tampa Bay Rays. Is it the Rays? I want to say it's the Rays. It sounds right. Maybe not last year because I didn't hear his name, but I know he did at one point. He's like a Houston a Houston native, so. But he's not, you know, you throw him into the rotation, he's a four or five at best. Just looking at prior numbers, I don't think they're that good, so we'll see. 
yeah, as long as Brent Strom's here, you usually trust him to turn average to below average pitchers into all stars. You know, like Charlie Morton, of course. Which actually brings me, it makes me think of Will Harris, a guy they let go of. So that was a tough one. I thought that they'd really try hard and give him what he wants. But Will Harris been the most consistent guy in the bullpen over the last three, four years here. Now that's that's tough. I mean, he bridged the gap, really. I think they're going to bank on Presley being fully healthy and Osuna just doing his thing as the closer. But you need another guy there. And I don't really know who that I – mean, well, Josh James, I think, is going to get the first shot at doing that. I can't see Josh James going to the rotation. That was sort of an option. I just think after losing Will Harris, Josh James is going to be important to bridge the gap back the bullpen. So, a few things there. I'm trying to think. So, look at the rotation now. There's one open spot. You got Verlander and Granke, and McCullers back, and Jose Arquiti. And then you basically have an open spot, which Pruitt might occupy, at least at this point. They haven't made a lot of noise. You know, the Garneau, the Dustin Garneau and Austin Pruitt were the only two people, at least that I know of, that they've actually signed, so, or got. So, yeah, Harris gone, Marisnik gone, of course, Garrett Cole gone. I'm trying to think who else. I said Chirinos. Chirinos is gone. I mean, they're bringing most of the core back. So, I mean, the team's going to be good. Just, the, oh, there's just so much talk out there about sign stealing, which yeah, they got busted for, and it was pretty clear as day they were doing it. And, you know, they talked about just recently about the whole buzzer with Jose Altuve asking to not have his jersey ripped off, walk off home run to win the pennant. And then apparently he ran into the the clubhouse, changed his shirts, and then came back out, which was also a little suspicious. But Major League Baseball investigated that, and they found nothing. So, But every little detail, every little thing is going to be looked at by other teams and their fans, and they're going to point it out. And uh, I guess the Astros have to expect <clears throat> a lot of this. So... Into spring training, I'm just ready for the season to start. I mean, it's can't come fast enough. We got another two months here, but Astros have had a lot going on in the off season, which is not usually a good thing. So, Mister, getting players, we'll see. I expect them to make a few more moves. I mean, you still got, you know, there was talk about trading Correa and getting, you know, like Luis Castillo. Starting pitcher for the Reds, who's pretty good. Yeah, Rendon. Anthony Rendon went to the Angels. I still don't think they're going to be good, but he's there. Now the Rangers got Corey Kluber. So the A's not doing much. It seems like they never do much, but they'll find themselves right in the middle of everything at the end. In fact, you could call them the best team in the division. So... <clears throat> which may be true. I mean, back-to-back 97-win seasons. Astros be very tough for them to get to 100 again, but they've really made it look so easy the last few years. If you want to attribute that to the sign-stealing, go for it, but I'm not really going to buy into that too much. I mean, they got caught at the end of the day. I just don't think... (coughs) Excuse me. I just don't think that that means a ton to know what pitches. I mean, it helps. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't think that that, I mean, you could take away maybe a few wins here and there. I just don't think it it means that much. I think they'll go out, they'll be right in the middle of things at the end of the year and we'll just pick up where we left off, basically. So, yeah. I feel like I'm forgetting a few mu- few moves. I mean, you still got Gurriel, of course, at first. Altuve, Correa, Rugman. And then behind the plate, it'll be mainly Martin Maldonado in the outfield. Of course, Springer. 
One thing I left out, Alemnes Diaz, who I thought was a one-year deal, was actually went through arbitration. They got everybody else settled except Alemnes Diaz, as far as I know. There was a big gap initially between Springer and what the Astros were willing to give him. I think they settled on $21 million or around there. So that's good. Center fields, yeah, let's see. Springer, I guess, would play center, right? You'll have Josh Reddick in right, although Kyle Tucker's going to get, I would think, most of the time. And then, of course, you got Brantley back. He'll have a full season of Jordan Alvarez. I mean, the lineup still one through six, seven is still pretty good. So, But Tucker will get <clears throat> some time. I think it's time. I think that's why they're trying to get rid of Reddick because Tucker's – it's time for him. Also, let's not forget, I think Forrest Whitley will definitely be pitching for us in spring training. And if he pitches very well, he could earn a spot because it's time for him as well. These top two prospects you held on to for a reason, I think it's time for them to actually pitch. They're just playing the big leagues, period. So we'll see. I mean, Jim Crane's, I guess, good. He calls the shots now. They don't have a GM, and he's going to take over that role. I'm sure they have other people internally that can fill the position, but nobody that I just – yeah, losing Jeff Luna, I, I don't agree with. I just – that was a tough one for me. I mean, again, they, they both – both Jeff and AJ were going to be suspended this year, so you're going to have to find replacements for them anyhow. But I'd like them to come back in 2021. But it's just, yeah, it's not going to happen. So you got to move on, move forward. We're going to get a lot of backlash, and this story doesn't seem to want to go away. And I'm sure it'll be talked about in the season. Just have to not worry about it. Don't let it affect you. Don't respond to what people have to say. I mean, there's not much you can say. I mean... <laughs> We got caught. It's just that it's that simple. So let people do what they want to do. We'll go out. We'll play baseball. We'll try to be good. We'll try to, you know, our actions will speak louder than words, I think, this year. And that's all we can do. That sort of cliche phrase is pretty meaningful at this point. So. Your actions, yes, our actions speak louder than words. So, anyway, I don't really have a full take. I, I just, you know, we got caught, bam, we cheated. We got caught for it. We paid the price. We'll pay the price these next few years. But I think the team will still be good. I think our only competition is going to be the A's. I know people think the Angels. I feel like people out there think the Angels are going to be good. I don't. Uh, Seattle will definitely probably be the worst team in the division. So if I just make you know quick predictions, still the season two uh, months away, so we'll wait to see what other moves are made. But I love the Astros and A's battling it out for the top seed there, and then whoever of course wins. So you'll have first and second taken care of. I put the Angels in the three seed, but I don't see them really threatening either the Astros or the A's, and then. Had the Rangers in the four seed, Seattle in the five. So I feel pretty confident in that. That sort of, yeah. But we'll see. I think they could uh, definitely use a bullpen arm because they, you know, lost. You know, calling me Q is still a free agent, along with Hector Rondon. I thought Rondon got signed by the Diamondbacks or somebody. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think he's coming back. They don't, if they haven't signed up at this point, I don't see him doing it, so. I think Peacock, Peacock will be back. Think about the bullpen, of course, Preston, Osuna, Peacock, James. Not really thinking baseball mode right now. Devo, I think, might be back. Will Harris is just tough. That's that's the glue that really kept the bullpen together, and that's a tough one to lose. He goes to the Nationals of all teams. The one he, it's funny how teams like fail against the opponents they play, and then that opponent ends up getting them. I feel like that's happened in sports more often than not, but or quite a few times. But, yeah, so can't even think of our bullpen pitchers as 
you know, you got a Brian Abreu who bounced back and forth between double-A or triple-A in the big leagues. I think they really wanted to give him a chance, so you'll have that. Uh, if I look, I want to check this out real quick, if I can get my phone to load correctly here. So, mainly the bullpen, because the bullpen is going to be interesting to see. Um, can't even get the right roster here. So I'll take a second here. All right. Aaron Sanchez, a guy they didn't tender. So, yeah, which actually brings me to Joe Biagini, a guy that will be in that bullpen. Didn't bring back Sanchez. Uh, there's a, Joe Smith, that's one I forgot. He was re-signed. Will Harris, of course, gone. Fromber Valdez is still in the system, but he's just a waste of time. Cy si Sneed might get some chances. Brady Rogers, a guy who, you know, went through Tommy John, but I think he's back, and he might get a, sh a shot at some time. Um, so, yeah, I talked, you know, Brian Abreu. Yeah, I got a few more there when you add, you know, Joe Smith and Biagini. Brady Rogers, I think, will get some chances. Cy Sneed might get an increased role, so... It's kind of a patchwork bullpen. I just feel like losing Smith, I think, is the big loss of the offseason. We knew Cole was gone, so that wasn't surprising. The Yankees gave him $324 million over, like, nine years. That's just – the Astros would never do that in a million years. But anyway, so we're coming up on 20 minutes. That's about all I got. I, I really want to get on today. This is exactly a week after they finally got, you know, their punishment or their penalty – and, you know, to, to get through this and to talk about what's happened so far via free agency trades, things like that. But they haven't made a lot of noise. They haven't really picked up. I think they will. They need a starter, I think, first and foremost. I would like Whitley to get a chance. I mean, I'm not high on Pruitt. We'll see what happens. But as of now, I'm not a huge Pruitt guy. We'll see. That could change. Brent Strom is a miracle worker, so at least we still have him, right? And, of course, Espada. Looks like he might remain the bench coach as, the, as soon as they get an actual manager. Uh, the players, just to go back to the sign-stealing thing, players didn't really do a whole lot of talking. They deserve to apologize, I believe, especially... Deja Hinch, which they might have done behind closed doors. Uh, Alex Cora got fired. Or they part mutual, mutually parted ways. Also Carlos Beltran. They, they were two huge contributors to this. Uh, both Cora and Beltran. So they both... It's funny because Beltran, you know, became the manager of the Mets in the offseason and he already is gone. So... Uh, the Red Sox apparently under investigation now because Cora was there and they used some video room to rel relay signs or whatever. So we'll see what penalty they get handed. Uh, Cora might get more of a suspension than Luno and Hinch. They both got a year. I would expect Cora to get more because he's a common thread on a lot of these stories. And Beltron was big on you know, a lot of whistling, banging of trash cans, I could go through everything they did, but y'all, those of y'all that actually listen probably have heard all of this before. So, you know, buzzers, which was not found by NMLB to be part of their cheating, but uh, placing a video camera out in center field, having a monitor, you know, close to the dugout, a walkway to the clubhouse, having a guy whistle, to whether it's an you know fastball to an off-speed pitch, and then banging of trash cans uh, appeared to be the better way to relay the signs. So they did that. So yeah, I, I mean, just not a fun situation. Tough, but 
me since I work for the organization as a tour guide I I don't have a choice I have to stick with this and just we're going to get a lot of back, backlash and I expect it I just need to refrain from talking about it responding to it more than anything but it's going to be tough especially the Astros going on the road with you know fan signs chants things like that it's going to be tough but just got to take it you know, it's, it's going to be a rough year when it comes to opposing teams, their fans, things like that, things they say. But you just got to take it and, and not not worry about it and just go out play baseball. I think that's what the team wants to do is go out and just play baseball. Going back to sort of the responses, Fan Fest was finally the time where they had to come out and sort of speak on it because questions are going to be asked. Nobody apologized. Hopefully they did that to A.J. Hinch, like I said, behind closed doors. But they didn't say a whole lot. They're probably asked to not say a whole lot. So, But they didn't even, I don't know. I don't know. Altuve had some good things to say. He said, you know, we'll be back in the World Series. Yeah, he proclaimed that. Kind of like that attitude, whether it's going to be true or not. But you got to have, yeah, got to stick together. Uh, it's tough to talk about or listen to, but yeah, I really want to get on today. It being a week after the fallout, everything that followed. So, still waiting on the Red Sox their penalty. The Astros will be hiring a manager, I would assume, here within the next few weeks. Then we'll get into spring training. But this is sort of my off-season report coming up on 27 minutes here. So, I will be new and improved the start of the season i might get on one more time with this mic i have here but i did get a bigger mic a sort of cam quarter type thing so i'll have more guests on but um follow me on twitter that's at david artist seven d-a-v-i-d-a-r-t-i-s seven uh, i talk a lot of astros during the season there and other sports in general uh, got a super bowl in two weeks Rockets are playing pretty good basketball. Playing right now as we speak. But yeah, follow me on Twitter. Hit that like button. Love to hear your thoughts on the Astros sign stealing, their acquisitions, their losses. Uh, I think there'll be more to come. Still a lot of st things to be talked about, things to be. We'll see if they get any other players. I think the manager is going to be a big thing until spring training, so. But I want to get on. It's been a few months, and a lot of Astros talk in the news about everything that's transpired. But I kind of want to give you my thoughts. And also, I want to hear from you. So leave it in the comment section below. Hit that like button. Do all that good stuff on YouTube. Share with your friends. But we'll talk to you. I can't give you an exact date, but in the coming months on just your final... Once spring training gets going and we see how things start to shake out, of course, I'll have my predictions for the full 25-man roster, all that good stuff. But for you, do all that good stuff on YouTube. Now follow me on Twitter, and I'd love to hear your comments. But I'll wrap things up there, and we'll talk to you next time.